space. Fill the space. This, this should have gone in my pet peeves video. Oh my gosh. It's Kirsten. Welcome back to the Confident Dancer YouTube channel. Since confidence is, uh, you know, kind of a part of this whole brand at the Confident Dancer, I thought I would just give you a master list of 14 tips that you can use as you dance in order to look more confident. And this isn't just about faking it till you make it, you guys. If you put these tips into practice, it does have an effect on the way you feel on the inside. These tips actually can help you almost from an outside-in approach. Some of these tips have more of an inside-out approach, but they will really help you to start to change your inner state and start to feel more confident. Because hey, even if you practice these tips to look more confident on the outside, you will start to get feedback from other people who are noticing and picking up on that confidence. And those responses will help you to reinforce that confidence you feel on the inside. So I hope that you really find this to be helpful. Watch till the end. This is value packed. And let me know in the comments which ones you find most helpful. And that's it. Let's get into the video. Tip number one is to lift your gaze and hold it steady. Our eyes communicate a lot. You've probably heard the saying that says the eyes are the window to the soul. There's really a lot of truth to that, right? And so since your eyes communicate so much for you, and hey, even communication and dance is 100% through body language. So remember that your body language is really saying something to other people. And the best place to start is with how you use your eyes. So if you are, and I used to do this a lot, I would like shift my eyes around a lot while I was dancing because I didn't want to make awkward eye contact with someone or I just honestly don't think I was very conscious that I was doing it, but it definitely was a physical manifestation of the inner insecurities that I had. And by the way, you know, with this video, yeah, like I said, a lot of the tips will be an outside in approach. It will be change your physiology to look more confident and there will be some effect on the inside. But if you do want to start doing that inner work to release your negative beliefs about yourself, to release insecurities and fears that are holding you back from appearing and feeling confident, then definitely reach out. That's one thing I specialize in in my individual coaching program, the Confident Dancer Coaching Program. So information is down below in the description. If you keep your gaze level as a default, you know, obviously there are times where you're dancing, you'll have it low or you'll have it high and that's great you know there's a room for variability but in general if you practice holding your gaze in your positions like if you're going to do let's say quasi epama like really hold your gaze out there and imagine that you're really looking at someone you're connecting with them out there hold your gaze steady wherever your gaze is supposed to be make it purposeful make it direct even in moments between combinations where you're just standing around avoid looking down if someone is talking to you make eye contact with them and really practice holding your gaze it will start to probably make you conscious of how often you look down or allow your eyes to turn around it's a really good exercise i mean even while i'm talking about it i'm like Nervousing myself looking down honestly because I'm all I also have my nose right there. But yeah, tip number two is to use full and expansive movements while you're dancing and also while you are just standing around on the side. Remember that we don't stop communicating confidence when we stop dancing. If you're in the studio, you're still communicating something and you are being seen between the combinations or between runs of different pieces if you're rehearsing. If you allow yourself to kind of break when you dance and you go back to this shrunken, small body language, then yeah, if you're dancing like this, it will make that seem fake. You want to be consistent. And when you're dancing, of course, you can probably imagine how to apply this point. Full, expansive movements. You could probably imagine how to do that, but a, a tip that I like to use is I like to really be conscious of the path of my movement. When I'm doing, let's say, a tombe pas de bray, instead of just going tombe pas de bray and allowing it to be flat, I breathe and I go up and I arch down, up, up, down. To have just more of an interesting full path of movement, or if I'm doing a chasse releve or a basque, instead of just going down, up, I want to make a big U shape. And it makes dancing really fun. So even if you're doing a turn, imagine a big spiral and an expansive finish. Like feel that your body is really stretching out in your elongated positions. 
And then you can have contrast, you know, you can have moments of being small and precise and being big and elongated in your movements. Having that contrast and an awareness of the different paths of movement that you're taking can help you to apply that type of just dancing more expansively. Because yeah, I think if you just think dance big all the time, it's helpful, but you know, it lacks some nuance because we want to have that expansion and contraction as we dance. That creates an interesting dynamic that also reads as very eye-catching and confident. Tip number three is to always finish strong. Finish your movements. And you guys, I know mistakes happen. We fall out of turns and all that. But y'all, you can do a double turn, kind of stumble out of it, and still put your foot down and like stay still for a second if it's the end of the combination. Or put your foot down and go into the next movement. It's so easy to just train ourselves to kind of like shrink back when we finish. Like, do your Susie finish and then like just hold it for half a second and go away. Instead of like really being still in that finish. Or if you're at a bar, you do your little balance. You Susu, you play a fifth, stretch, go away. Like stretch, break the position. No, no, no. Take a second to really hold your final positions. Make a habit out of it. It is so important. I promise you, if you start retraining yourself to find it normal to finish your positions, hold them, again, hold your direct gaze wherever it's going to be in your final position. Hold, take a breath, be totally still, and then you can break. I will say often as you break out of your final position, it's common to like go back to insecure small body language. Nope, nope. Stay open, stay expansive. You could relax, you know, relax, but you don't have to relax like this. <laughs> it's a correction that I actually got years ago and it really opened my eyes. Like I had no idea that I had this heavily ingrained habit of dancing expansively, big and confident. And then I would do my final pose. I wouldn't really, really hold it. I would just kind of like hit it and, and leave. And it just read as like this very insecure finish to a confident presentation the rest of the time. It was weird. So I'm so grateful someone told me I was doing that because once I started to practice the full confident and still finish whenever appropriate, it really does show you off well. So put that into practice. Tip number four is as you're dancing, hold movements until the very end of your allotted count. I know you've heard this, but it translates as so confident because you're not just like kind of getting three quarters of the way through the count and like falling into the next thing. It's very strong and it's intentional. And obviously this goes for your finish too. Hold whatever you're supposed to do until the end of the allotted time. And a bonus tip is to use a quality called rubato. I learned this in music training. I think in college, I took a music theory class and my piano teacher had also taught me this growing up, but I had forgotten the actual word for it until I relearned it in college. And rubato is this quality of stealing from the end of one phrase and then quickening up to kind of catch up into the next phrase. So that looks like holding in your breath seven, eight, and one hand up, you know, whatever. You kind of speed up your next steps to catch up in the music. And it creates this excitement and it reads as so confident because it shows that you're making your own choices. You're adding your own flair to things while still being appropriate. It also shows that you're not afraid to be seen. You're not afraid to stand out in a good way. So using rubato and holding your positions to the end of their allotted time and then sometimes plus a little and then catch up. You know, as long as you catch up, that's the important part. Obviously just Consistently being behind the music is not a vibe. Use rubato, don't just be late. Tip number five is you can practice imagining that there is a spotlight on you. In class, chances are you probably dance with a ceiling light above you. Practice catching the light with your face and your chest. Rather than, you know, I notice that if I'm kind of dancing like this, even just a little bit, my face and chest do not catch the light in the same way. You want to look like you're really soaking it in. You using your imagination to really change your physiology and it reads as so confident. Tip number six is to stand towards the front more often. You don't have to do it all the time, but it's noticeable if you're avoiding the front. So at least several times throughout the class or in a week, Sometimes it depends on the teacher, especially in ballet classes. Sometimes they assign spots where they say, okay, line one, line two, line three. If they're orchestrating things, then okay, whatever. But even if you are being told to be in the front, like own the space in the front. Remember, and this is where mindset comes into it. I think a lot of times we feel like we're more comfortable in the back because we can hide 
You guys, once you actually start remembering that you are visible pretty much anywhere, you really are. You really are. Just realize that the front really isn't that much different than the back. Plus, if you're making a scene to constantly try to hide and shuffle in the back, don't worry, we notice you, we notice you. So please, please, please. Also, with this tip, if there is a space that needs to be filled in the front, fill the space. Fill the space. This, this should have gone in my pet peeves video. Oh my gosh. It is not a confident move. It is not a team player move or a good career move to be the dancer who consistently is like, oh no, 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 you stand in the front. Or like the teacher's like, okay, let's get her in our groups. And you just like instantly run to the back and like push through dancers to get to the back. Meanwhile, there's this like gaping hole in the first group that needs to be filled and no one wants to fill it. Y'all just just fill it. You made more of a scene and you made more of a bad impression by not filling the space way more than if you were to go in the first group or stand in the front and then make a little mistake. Fill a need, fill the space, take up space. Hey dancers, I hope you're really enjoying this video so far. I want to briefly share something with those of you who have been experiencing things like low self-esteem, performance anxiety, self-doubt, putting a lot of pressure on yourself, comparison, caring a lot about what other people think, relying on external validation. I could go on and on and on about a lot of these common mental struggles that a lot of us dancers face, especially if you're dancing and training and performing at a high level. If that's something you've been experiencing and you really long to have the mental mental skills and support to be able to overcome performance anxiety, know how to perform well under pressure, overcome self-doubt, and actually start to trust and believe in yourself for real and build real confidence so you can enjoy dancing again and perform to your highest potential, if that's something that you want, that's exactly what the Confident Dancer Coaching Program is designed to help you do. This is my individual mindset coaching program that I've designed to help dancers build a healthy mindset that actually helps them to feel and perform their best consistently. If this is something you're interested in seeing, if it's a good fit for you, just click the link below to visit theconfidentdancer.com, learn all about what the program includes, how it works, read incredible testimonials from past clients that I've worked with, and schedule a free 30-minute consultation where you and I can connect, discuss your goals and challenges, and see honestly if working together would be a great fit for you personally. That's the best next step, and since it's no strings attached and totally risk-free to you, my might as well give yourself the gift of pursuing this and seeing if it could really be that thing to take you to the next level in your dancing. So if that's something you resonate with or are interested in, again, head to theconfidentdancer.com and I look forward to connecting with you there. All right, let's head into the rest of the video. Tip number seven is to acknowledge and celebrate other dancers around you. Be a team player. This really shows as confident when you're able to celebrate what someone else does well, because it means that you're not so insecure that you can't handle someone else winning. Believe me, what goes around does generally come around. If you are the dancer who is genuinely happy for people and open to saying like, good job, or you know, if people are cheering for a person who just did five pirouettes, join them, you smile at them, you know, tell them good job because that really does show that you are confident enough to celebrate when someone else is doing well and you don't take it so personally or make it mean that, oh, they're getting something good so then that's less attention for me. No, that's a scarcity mindset. When you are a team player and you celebrate other people, eventually, probably, depending on your studio dynamic, if it's, you know, remotely healthy, it'll come back around. People will want to celebrate you too, especially if they feel that your praise is genuine and kind-hearted. And even if the praise doesn't come back around, which that's not why we're doing this, it does show that you are a confident person, that you're able to lift other people up. And I do really think that comes back to you in a good way. But at the very least, it does serve you by coming off as confident. Tip number eight is to be direct in your wording and in your tonality when you ask a question. Instead of really beating around the bush or using a bunch of words to just ask your question, just ask your question, whatever you need to know, ask it directly, make eye contact and use more commanding tonality. Just say very matter of factly what you're trying to say, ask your question, just say it plainly and directly. Tip number nine is to allow yourself to genuinely enjoy the dancing that you're doing. When you really allow yourself to enjoy it and you feel like what feels good about the movement, what feels good in your body, you enjoy the music, you get inspired by it, you allow yourself to have some fun that really comes across in your face like you really glow you beam you could see that soft smile coming out of a person 
who's really enjoying themselves. And it's so infectious. People want to watch you. It makes you magnetic because feelings are contagious. If you're feeling good, other people feel good watching you. So it's such a confident move to really enjoy yourself because it allows people to see you. And when you allow yourself to be seen and you attract attention, that's a confident person thing to do. Tip number 10 is to not be afraid to be different in a good way. Hear me out. <laughs> you can watch the video I made on how to stand out appropriately in ballet class. I highly recommend that you watch that one in just getting more context on how to apply this tip. Y'all don't do any of these things like to get attention because if you're like overly attached to attention, people feel that. So don't try so hard to be different to like try to get attention from people what i mean is that if you genuinely like want to do your hair a certain way if you genuinely love to dance with like big expansive port bra if you want to like bend a little more on your balance says do it do it if you can hold a balance longer than everyone else don't do it to be like gross and competitive do it just stay if instead of uh, like noticing that other people have already come down from their balance and you're like, oh, I guess I need to come down now. <laughs> like, take your time. Take your time. Take up your space. Obviously, do it appropriately. <laughs> I'm not saying like hold everyone up, but just remember you're not holding people up or causing them problems by finishing your balance confidently and nicely, okay? You're not causing people an inconvenience by you catching their eye, you know? You're giving them something nice to look at. So don't be afraid to be different by adding an artistic detail that no one else may be thought to add, but you're just feeling it. Or holding your arabesque balance like a hair longer before you do your three quick steps into a tortilla and grind labor. Don't be afraid to stand out every now and then. Tip number 11 is very general. It's just to not shrink in your body language, whether that's with your eye line, with your hands when you're dancing, with your chest or the posture of your spine. Feel that your energy is always expansive and going outwards. Now, I say always, there will be moments where it gets smaller to then get bigger again. And that creates a beautiful effect in dancing. But in general, you want your energy to go outwards and extend beyond your limbs while you're dancing. Tip number 12, actually step in and fill spaces where there is need. Be a team player in that way. If someone is needed in the first group and there's an uneven number, go ahead and step in and don't step in all like, uh, like just step in. Okay, that is a major confident like baller move, not being arrogant. It's more of like, again, you are serving the whole, you're doing a service to the group. You're allowing class to just move forward or rehearsal to just move on and move forward and you're doing what needs to be done. And I think that's actually a move that shows that you don't have ego, you know, you are a team player, you're filling needs. People will be glad that you step in. I think they're gonna be more glad that they will be critical of you for like making maybe one tiny mistake if you're not totally sure of the spot. Tip number 13 is to not constantly stare at yourself in the mirror between combinations or during combinations. Now, there's a flip side to this too, where some dancers constantly avoid looking at themselves in the mirror. Like I've seen dancers who will like look up or in like weird directions when they need to be on FOSS, like straight facing the mirror because they don't want to see themselves. Obviously then the challenge for you would be to start making eye contact with yourself in the mirror and becoming comfortable with that. But a lot of what I see more often is dancers looking at themselves in the mirror and like adjusting their, their leotard, their skirt constantly and kind of fidgeting. That shows that you're uncomfortable with your appearance. So just practice then not looking at yourself so often and just allowing yourself to be as you are. It's okay if you know, not every single inch of you is absolutely perfect. Just allow yourself to be, and that actually reads as a very confident move. The final tip is to not apologize, either physically for your dancing, like we can apologize in our body language, like, uh, you know, shrink or like, uh, kind of show like frustration. I know you, some of y'all watching, you feel called out by that for a reason, stop doing that. I mean, it's common, I used to do it a lot too. You know what I'm talking about when I say that a lot of us dancers will make a mistake and we'll like act all like physically frustrated with ourselves or disappointed because we wanna to project to other people that we know we made a mistake and we identified it before you judge me for it. Don't worry, I already saw it. That's a pride thing, you guys. You need it. Practice vulnerability, let it be. Mistakes are normal. Don't apologize for your dancing in your body language 
or verbally, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. You don't need to apologize unless you've caused someone harm or you really have been in the wrong. Then, of course, apologize. I'm all for that. But we don't need to apologize for being imperfect. Okay, dancers, I, again, would love to know which tips you resonated with the most in this video. I'd love to know if you have any additional tips that I did not cover in this video. And be sure to give this a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. That lets me know that you want me to make more videos like this. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in next week's video. Bye-bye.